Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today on the bench I have this amplifier board which is a bridged TDA 2050 pair and I'm going to convert them back into stereo. But first, working on the John Audio Tech boards here, got all the components on except for the ones that will mount to the heat sink. I need to get some standoffs here and then I can get the proper distance and solder these components on. So in an up and coming video, maybe the next one, maybe a couple videos away, I don't know, I will make a video on the JAT 501 amplifier. Uh, by the way, apologize for the noise in the background. It's very cold outside and I'm not going to turn the furnace off, which I usually do when I make videos. That's just how it rolls here at John Audio Tech Show. No fancy polished videos or anything like that. So anyway, I have the TDA 2050 amp. Now this is not the heat sink. This is just kind of a heat spreader mounting board. It has uh, holes here where the screws go through and then there's a standoff so it's not, you know, flapping around in the breeze and mounts up to a heat sink. I have to do modifications to convert this back. So you might ask, why am I doing this? A bridge amp has more power. Can I just get more chips and build another one? Well, this has been sitting around in my junk box since I made it 10 or 11 years ago. And to me, it's more useful as a stereo amplifier. And they don't make the TDA 2050 anymore. And if you watch my channel, I was actually impressed when I did distortion performance tests on these chips. They're actually better than the LM1875 as far as distortion performance. I was quite surprised. I always thought the LM1875 would be better. And yes, all the chips I have are authentic. I have a small hoard of these as well, but you know I want to, you know, not waste any. Put this to use, and you can get 20, 25 watts out of these things, pretty easy. So that's plenty for me. I don't really need the power of a bridge amplifier. Okay, so let me show you a schematic of this circuit and what I'm going to do with it. Well, I don't need to draw a schematic because there's one here in my SGS Thompson book. They're called ST Microelectronics nowadays. But this book's from, this data book's from 1991. And yeah, this is a TDA 2040, but the TDA 2050 circuit is essentially the same. Now, I use different component values in my circuit. I wanted the gain to be different. So they're not exactly the same, but you know the layout of the circuit's essentially the same as a schematic. So what they're doing here, you have your input in this upper amplifier, and it's pretty much configured as a normal amplifier, except they take some signal off of the upper amplifier and bring it back to the negative feedback circuit of the second amplifier and the gains are set the same. So what happens is the signal that comes out of this amplifier is brought to this amplifier and inverted so it's equal and opposite. So what happens your output voltage swing doubles and when you double the voltage into the same impedance you also double the current so you get four times the output power. Well Theoretically, in the real world, you don't quite get that much, but essentially with a bridged amplifier, you get a lot more power. Like I say, I don't need that. I just need, I'd rather have a stereo amplifier. So what I have to do with this circuit is to remove this resistor from here. And this input here is just connected to ground through its biasing resistor. Just turn this into an input like this one for the other channel. 
course I'll have my uh, RF filter on the input which they're not using here and of course the output won't be connected across a load like this it'll have its own output and ground for each side okay so I removed that heat spreader like I said this is not the heat sink it's just a mounting board for the amp for heat spreading and then that mounts up to a heat sink because that's this is far too small to dissipate much heat for this amplifier but anyway I removed that here's that resistor can't see it through the viewfinder it's kind of hiding in there right right down there that's the one that goes from one output to the negative feedback circuit of the other amp so this will be removed then I'll have to add the input circuit on this amplifier looks like I have just enough room to do so this disk capacitor is just part of the RF filter which will have to be also replicated and for bridged I was running this thing pretty hot the gain it was a 22k resistor and a 560 resistor in the feedback divider pair or the feedback divider circuit and I looked at the amp I use for my daily listening it's essentially the same amplifier and it's my daily driver amp you know I don't own any fancy receivers expensive high-tech audio or anything personally I think if you want to spend money anywhere you want to get a good set of speakers but um, anyway yeah pretty much my daily driver no fancy audio gear on the John Audio Tech channel but anyway um, yeah I think I'm gonna leave those the uh, gain value as is it was working pretty good for my main listening amp and we have all these jumpers going to ground I think I'll lay a piece of copper across all of those on this side and solder it up so it'll have a shorter ground path and yeah this is the that Radio Shack solder board where you like I say you lay it out on your socket board and then you can transfer it right over to these boards at least with the older ones these traces would lift pretty easy so you have to pretty much solder across the whole thing to make sure you're not going to get a crack or anything in the trace so uh, let me grab some components here and uh, get to work on this okay it is all complete so I removed that one resistor and added the capacitor for the second amps input RF filter caps are installed and I uh, took care of the soldering and flowed some solder across all of these traces here on the bottom side mounted it up to its little bracket here I'm not going to mount it to the heat sink just for testing I'll run it at lower supply voltage so it doesn't get hot and I don't know if you can see that I put that piece of copper across there to thicken up the ground plane a little bit since this doesn't really have thick traces okay got it hooked up to the supply for a plus and minus six volts if I didn't mention before I'm not going to run it at a higher voltage because I'm not going to put it on the heat sink and I don't want it to get too hot on the small bracket so we'll go ahead and press play here Okay, better stop there. I might get the old flag. Yeah, I'd rather play that kind of music than that YouTube stuff, but eh, what are you going to do? 
But anyway, it sounds good, my stereo. So what I'll do next, not in this video, but in a future video, I want to actually uh, make a little case for this. And, you know, put all the little connectors on, a volume control. Then I'll have another little amplifier. So there you have it, my little parts box amplifier modification. Make it more useful for me. And we'll have more for you in the next one. Thanks for watching.